Hello, and welcome to the Origins Podcast. I'm your host, Lawrence Krauss. Jenny Boylan is a skilled and witty author and university professor of English who provides an important and unique perspective on the world. She's a trans woman who transitioned in 2000 and has described her experiences in several brilliant memoirs, the most famous of which is She's Not There, which generated a host of questions I wanted to ask her about. I was privileged to first meet both Jenny and her wife Didi about four years ago in Aspen, when we were both speaking at an event, and I was so taken with our discussion that I invited her to participate in an Origins Project event on sex, gender, and reproductive rights a few years ago. While Jenny is one of the most eloquent national spokespeople on transgender issues, I wanted to have a personal discussion with her about how her own transition impacted on her writing and her views of the world, and also the views of others about her. Her reflections are particularly important and relevant now as transgender individuals are once again under attack. We discussed all of this as well as issues of religion where we have slightly different perspectives. Our discussion was warm, personal, and eloquent, and I found it to be one of the most enjoyable we've recorded to date. Patreon subscribers can find the full video of this program and all our programs the day they are released at patreon.com slash origins podcast. I hope you enjoy the show. Jenny, it's great to be with you again. Hey, Lawrence, what's happening? (laughs) Last time was in Arizona, and now it's in New York, a totally different world, a sea change. Yeah, it's, um, yeah, a sea change. (laughs) I I was in the Protestant cemetery in Rome, standing by the grave of Shelley, and Mm -hmm. on the um, uh, slab where Shelley is buried is a quote from The Tempest, nothing of him doth remain. Uh, He has... um, but he hath endureth a sea change into something <laughs> rich and strange. And but standing there, uh-huh. I didn't think it said sea change. Uh-huh. I thought it said it sex, yeah. sex change. So, so and I was like, really, Shelley? <laughs> Shelley knew. Well, you know, it's, <laughs> Shelley's kind of a female yeah. name, so it's except it was the yeah. last one. But it's okay. Nice name for. Well, a girl. it's hard to. There you go. It's been prevalent far longer than people ever imagined. Indeed. Well, going back to Lord Corn Cornberry. Uh-huh. Lord Cornbury, uh, the, the one of the first governors of the um, uh, territory, the province uh-huh. of, of New York, in, in uh, uh, I believe 1705 or uh-huh. so, his portrait in drag hangs in the New York City Historical Museum. Um, and so, uh, and actually, he was governor of New York and New Jersey. Um, and so, yeah, we've been here a long freaking time. Yeah, and it goes both ways. And in, in so, well, sometimes out of necessity. Uh, uh, many, a uh, few, at least one female pope who had to pretend for a long time. Right? Yeah, I love that story. <laughs> well, the, the, you know, happily, hopefully, and we'll talk about this. We're not in times where you have to pretend, uh, one way or another. It would be wonderful. Actually, we all pretend, I suppose, in some way or other. We, we we make it through the world pretending. Put on the faces to meet the faces that we meet. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And uh, that's the stuff of literature, which we'll talk about. I've learned a tremendous amount from you, and enjoy your your, your writing and your and our conversations. Let's start with your story a little bit. I mean, it, it's well known because you've written a you know a, a trilogy of memoirs in a way, but 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 uh, but the one that I know best is what she's not there. Mm-hmm. The, which, and so. But but for people who haven't read it, the 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 context of your own decision to be to or the 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 trend the transition to transgender mm-hmm. a little a little summary maybe. Well, uh, let's see. Uh, I was born in 1958, uh, and my earliest memory is of um, my mother ironing my father's shirts. Uh, she had um, a blue plastic bottle that she used to. Uh, um, uh, you know, as a as a mm-hmm. steamer, I guess. Yeah. And as she was ironing the shirts, she said to me, "Someday you'll wear shirts like this." And I remember oh. thinking, "What? <laughs> Why would I wear shirts like my father's?" And so, um, for me, I had a sense of um, being trans from a very very early age. Oh. It's worth saying, not every trans person does, but yeah. I did, um, and it was pretty well. Um, you know, it was re- pretty much part of my my wiring and a fund- fundamental sense of self. But I also knew pretty early on it was something I better keep 
quiet and keep to myself because I had a somehow I knew intuitively that this was a thing that would get me in trouble and that would be a source of conflict for me in the world. Um, so I kept it secret for most of my life until it's funny. On the one hand, I mean, I had two prayers. One yeah. prayer was, please m- let me wake up female yeah, like yeah, I right. feel, like I've yeah. always felt. And on the other hand, I had the sense of, please make it go away. Yeah, yeah sure. And I, to make a long story short, I, I think I always felt that if I were loved deeply enough, mm-hmm. um, that it would be okay to, to stay a boy, that right. that would be my second best life. And, but my, you know, my first, my best life seemed like it would ensure um, violence and uh, uh, um, lovelessness and, mm-hmm. and um, that I would be um, alone and marginalized the rest of my life. Anyway, uh, finally, I did fall in love um, with my wife, whose mm-hmm. name is Deirdre. In the books, I call her Grace, but her mm-hmm. real name is Deirdre. And that seemed to address my dilemma for a while and and yet then the, the feelings eventually emerged and then i had two problems one of which was that i was trans and the other mm-hmm. was that i had a secret yeah so eventually i came out to my wife and and um uh after a, a complex process which the book describes yeah. we decided to stay together and we have now been married for 30 years 12 as husband and wife, yeah. and 18 as wife and wife. And the, I mean, the ironic thing is that love, in a way, did cure me yeah. in the end, but not in the way that I expected. And that my my prayer was answered, ironically, which I think is the fate of many prayers, actually, because yeah. we we don't know what to ask for or how to ask for it. Yeah. And so, in a way, the thing that I that I was hoping for was um, to be loved, which which I am. But it's worth saying that a lot of transgender people aren't loved, and the yeah. good fortune that I found is, uh, I don't know if it's a rarity, but it's it it, it ought to be the it, rule. Well, it ought to be the rule for everyone. I is that well, know, yeah. being loved is a is a, is, 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 is there, the any, best, I mean, is there anything is, better than that? This is what we know why we are here. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. As a scientist, maybe you disagree, but I bet not. No. That this is why we're on. This well, you planet. talk about purpose. We're, I never talk about purpose, but, we're but we need to, to be We're here loved. to love each other, yeah. and we're here to be loved. Yeah. And um, is that a purpose, or is that just well, a good way of passing the time? Well, <laughs> it just happened, yeah. <laughs> well, we may debate about that later, in fact. in the But, but it's funny, because I met, the first time I met you, we were both at an event in, in, in Aspen, and the first, and I was sitting in the oh, audience, yeah, right. but I was sitting in the audience next to Didi. And 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 it was really interesting because I got to know her before I got to know you because oh, we were talking while you were talking she was making side comments to me <laughs> <laughs> and it was fascinating yeah and and you know you're a lucky woman I and, am and you were a lucky man I, and, I am both of those yeah I and, was both and of not those. everyone gets to be that but yeah. there are whole sorts of questions I've never gotten to ask you that I want to ask Let's hear but it. first but first there was a period interestingly enough so it was self um, self image is incredibly important and there was a long period when you. When before you transitioned, when first privately and then publicly you dressed as a woman. First privately, yeah, right. You you in the in the secret uh, the privacy of your own room, right? Yeah. And then I remember you talked about with great passion or at least great fear, maybe because of an important moment, the first time you walked outside as a woman, as at least oh, yeah. with an yeah, appearance as a woman. Yeah, the cold air on my bare legs. Yeah, there was nothing like that in a man's experience. Well, I just, I, I've, I've had a kilt and I guess. It, <laughs> well, I just felt, I felt very um, exposed and very yeah. vulnerable, both in, 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 in physically, but also metaphorically. Yeah, I just yeah felt, sure. Suddenly I knew um, how thin the ice was that I was walking, walking upon. Yeah, I did, I did all that. Um, it's important to say clothes have never been that important to mm. me. And in fact, to some degree being pretty, mm-hmm. Being feminine has, is not that important to me. And I think when people think about um, trans issues, it's important to separate. One way of thinking about it is the difference between femininity uh, and femaleness. So the thing that I always um, yearned for was, uh, th- was the body that I'm, that mm-hmm. I'm, I'm now in, in which mm-hmm. I'm fairly certain there's a neurological basis in, mm-hmm. in, in the way I was wired for, to be um, mm-hmm. shaped like this and to, to, to live here. Um, but femininity, you know, uh, makeup and, and, mm-hmm. and, uh, uh, the stilettos, I don't know. It, I, I can't say it's, it's not any fun because sometimes it really yeah. is. It's, 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 it's a gas, but it, but as a, as a way of life, um, 
you know, uh, the truth of my heart is better expressed in, well, the truth is better expressed in my heart than in, in, in yeah, a little button nose. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But you know, there's a, for speaking of that, I think it just reminded me of a funny, again, a funny episode, which I think is after you, around the time you're transitioning, I think Didi made a big point saying, I'm not going to... I'm not going to do your makeup. I'm not going to go girl shopping with you. Yeah. And she made her big point, like, okay, I'm going to live through this experience with you, but don't expect me to sort of train you. Right yeah, now. I, I I don't know if she regrets that now. Um, she didn't want to make it any easier for me back mm -hmm. in the day. Yeah. And all I can say is that I, I understand that she, sure. at the time, I think she felt very much like she was being asked to participate in uh, something that felt like a loss to her, and, um, and it, it turns out it, it was not it was not a loss, um, mm -hmm. uh, at least not in those terms. Um, in many ways, I think it straight, strengthened our relationship. Sure. Yeah. Um, but um, at the time, you know, she was. Uh, uh, what's the phrase in soccer? She she was playing the match under protest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can certainly get that, and you can certainly understand it. And it's a, it, it, I find that your I find that the your relationship fascinating. We'll come back to it uh, in in a sense at some at at some point. But you also point out uh, that your experience is different because you're a woman who wasn't a girl, and that as a result you didn't. For example, I was just thinking of simple things like putting on makeup and and, uh, uh, and how how you had to learn. <laughs> yeah, I I didn't know any of that stuff. Mm -hmm. And um, it, it didn't come naturally. Yeah. Uh, no one showed me how to do it. I had yeah. to figure it out myself. And by trial and error, um, on also there are a lot of aspects of, um, I mean, the question is, who was I going to be now that yeah. I was a woman? Yeah. Um, because to be a woman means so many different things. And... I think at first I really wanted to express the thing that I hadn't been able to express before. So when I first popped out of the box, I think I was very feminine. Mm -hmm. I was I kind of went through a second adolescence sure, in a way. Sure. Um, and, uh, you know, there were a lot of stretchy t-shirts and, <laughs> and uh, I never quite got up to navel rings, but <laughs> it was a close call. <laughs> but as time has gone on, and this, it, it's as I've gotten more used to being in this body, but it's also about getting older. Yeah. Um, it, it's a good thing that beauty is less important to me now because yeah. it's it, it's um, something that's as as the years go mm -hmm. by is getting farther from my fingertips. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's really funny when I first when I first came out, um, and you know, I would walk down the streets of New York City, and yeah. about, and you know, literally construction workers would yeah. whistle. Like yeah. literally, that yeah. would happen. Yeah. And part of me was like, "How dare they? How yeah. dare they do that?" Yeah. And the other part of me was like, "Well, yeah. looking good, Jenny Boyle." <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, uh, now, interesting when you say New York City, because of course you live in Maine. I assume was it much easier to do it in New York City than it was with no, women? No, no, it wasn't easier in New York. Um, uh, there were more people to be to be seen by. by yeah. Um, but. I, I, you know, I had a community of people who were who, yeah. who loved yeah. me yeah, mostly sure. um, in in Maine, and so even though I was I was more awkward, and maybe people in a rural state were less sophisticated around the issues, supposedly. Yeah. Um, I I still was protected by my community. People wanted mm -hmm. it to go well for me as yeah, best yeah, they could. Yeah, yeah, that's so, nice. Um, They're rooting for you. That yeah. makes a big difference. I mean, that was the thing. Huge difference. It was the thing that people assumed that Didi and I would divorce and that I would move to some place yeah. like New York, where there'd be a lot of other transsexuals yeah, so I could it, hang out with. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you know, and I love I love my sisters, but uh, other transgender people isn't exactly what the my, you, my cohort. You, yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, I mean, sometimes it is, but yeah. my coders, my, my natural cohort is other writers, yeah. um, other musicians, yeah. Um, and yeah, yeah, other I, shit kickers. Yeah, yeah. No, okay. Now let me. I want to <laughs> get there actually, because but first, you was thinking when in terms of training yourself to do simple things from simple female things. Uh, many people think, uh, at least I. Of course, I'm not a woman, so but I think that. Daughters, not yet. When, not yet, but give <laughs> me time. Early. <laughs> I, I, I try to have a female side, but yeah. anyway, but but daughters learn from mothers, right? Y mm. Your mother, of course, didn't train, sort of quote unquote, train. As you point out, she yeah. said, you're, one day you're going to wear this shirt. She was training you, if anything, to be a man. Yeah. And did that, um, do you, a question I have is, do you think in some ways, some aspects of your, of the woman you decided to be was looking at your mother? I don't know. 
Um, it, it, there are things I got from my mother, but I suspect that what I got more from her was a sense of generosity, a sense of love, um, a sense of um, kindness, um, a sense of reserve, maybe. Um, and th- those, you know, those are the things I learned from her. I mean, yeah. let, me, wait, let me flip it on you. How, did you think, do you think that your father tra- trained you to be a man? I mean, it was no. all... No, no, yeah. and I've, I think maybe I often think that's maybe a shame in a way. I, I didn't. My, I was kind of distant from my parents. Uh, mm-hmm. I used them as foils. Actually, I would mm-hmm. look at, and particularly my mother, who was more dominant than my father. That mm-hmm. that I would often look at her behavior and say, "Good, that's an example of what I don't want to do." Well, so this is the question: is how do we become ourselves? And yeah. and, and we, it, it's you know, it's a cliche to say, "Well, we learn how to be a man mm-hmm. or a woman yeah. from that same sex parent." Yeah. But I, you know, I mean, I had. Um, I had two children, mm-hmm. and what did they learn from me? Mm-hmm. Um, did they learn about being a man? Did they learn about being a woman? Yeah. I, th- I think what my children learned from me, I hope, was a sense of, uh, you know, rooting for the underdog, yeah. a sense of um, kindness to people who are different, yeah. um, a sense of the importance of family. Uh, so, the, I, so those are the things that I'm aware of teaching my children. I never... You know, I don't know how to throw a football, so I never taught them that. I, you know, tried to teach them how to make a nice tomato sauce. <laughs> well, that's or, useful yeah. for everyone, gravy. male or female, yeah. right? I mean, Italian that's what gravy, it get, it's going to get you through life. But um, did I, and one thing I don't remember if it's in, of course, the reaction. Your mother was alive when you transitioned. Or, yeah, yeah, and yeah, it's a whole and, story. And, yeah, Italian. exactly. That's right. And, and I, I think it acceptance or uh, 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 is a key thing, right? I mean, from your, or, or is it? it? Well, of course it is. And and so uh, transgender people are generally understood to have, to, to struggle and yeah. to have um, all these psychological problems. But what's funny is usually the psychological problem is not the fact that they're trans. Yeah. The psychological yeah. trouble that we face has to do with other people being assholes to yeah. us yeah. and other people... Um, Trying to crush our spirit, or 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 to crush our actual bodies. Uh-huh. To um, you know, there are there are children in this country who are thrown out of their own houses by mm-hmm. their, but supposedly mm-hmm. loving parents. Uh, there are people who who lose their jobs, who lose uh, their their families, and their their right to see their children, all because of who they are. Mm-hmm. And so they wonder why why we. Why we struggle in the world? It's not because we're trans. It's because other people fail to open their hearts. That's particularly true for transgender, but I think it's probably universal in some ways for people. For, for yeah, sure. The, the um, you know, I, I, it's funny for me. I, I, I was fortunate enough to be asked. I, I, I performed several weddings because I'm ordained. You'll be, be surprised. Oh no, nothing would surprise I, me yeah, about yeah. you, Clarence. <laughs> but I, I did it so I could perform weddings. But actually, I can do that too. I'm, as a notary public in um, oh, Maine, and you I, could do I it. Can, in as long as you're in the state of Maine. I okay, and I'm, I'm the a reverend actually in the Universal Life Church. Very good. And in fact, I, one of the reasons I did is I have I have a placard that now I can put in the back of my car that says "Reverend in Performance of Your Duty," so ah, I can park. Clergy. Most, yeah, I can cl- park many places. Can Dude. Be open. But I was able to perform wed- weddings, and one of the things I was I was rem- that was remarkable for me, and probably unique, because I performed what I think is the only wedding, a uh, lesbian, uh, atheist, vegan. Wedding in Texas, <laughs> but what amazed uh, you're me, really checking boxes, yeah, aren't you? I didn't. They asked me, but 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 uh, but what I, what so impressed me was the happiness of the ceremony because even the grandparents, there were eighty five year nine year old grandparents who were just thrilled by this, and and I think that must make it so much easier for for in, in an environment is the low. I mean. Wherever we live, whether it's Texas or New York or Maine, it's our kind of microcosm. It's not the big society. The big society, right. of course, frames some general problems and challenges for all of us and women and and or, or men or transgender people. But it's the local local group around you that has a, a huge impact. Yeah, agreed. Now, when you were younger, you talked about sort of your identity. When you dreamed, did you ever dream yourself as a woman? Oh, of course. From the time you were young, you oh, saw yeah, yeah. yourself. Your yeah, self, sure. your gender was absolutely. So, but when you were, I would up, dream that I was. I would dream that I was um, in trouble. I mean, I would dream mm-hmm. that um, I was appearing as myself, and that other people, you know, wanted to know 
you know, who I was or what oh. I was, what I thought I was doing. So I'm gonna, I don't want to sound like a psychiatrist here, but would, 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 then they were generally sort of anxiety provoking dreams or happy dreams. Um, they were mysterious more than anything mm. else. I wouldn't say they weren't, they weren't, um, they, 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 they weren't, um, anxious dreams usually. Um, it was just, I mean, the, the language of dreams, it's not the language of, of a novel. Yeah. It was an, it was, it was just, I went to this other place mm-hmm. and, um, uh, it was a place of mystery. Well, okay. Now there's some other, uh, 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 you're many things and I want to talk, we all are, but you're, you know, uh, you are a lovely writer and I, who's, I enjoy reading tremendously, uh, and a musician as we'll get to. When you transitioned or after you transitioned, did it change your writing? Well, uh, maybe that's not for me to say. Maybe it's for readers to well, say. Do you feel it? Did you feel it? And you're uh, in the process of writing. Did you feel anything different about? Well, what? I tell you what. It, as so, as a, a, a as a man, that's in, mm-hmm. in quotes. Mm-hmm. Before transition, anyhow, um, I wrote novels. Most of them were kind of comic and entertaining. And I think in those novels, yeah. I, so I wrote a novel which is titled The Planets. Mm-hmm. I wrote one titled The Constellations, which mm-hmm. was a sequel. And then there was a novel called Getting In. Mm-hmm. Um, and those three novels, I think, have a kind of manic energy to them, and to some degree, oh. um, I, looking at them now, to me, it feels like a, um, it feels like a story is being told by somebody who's trying to stay one step ahead of the reader, mm-hmm. who's not being quite. Um, on the level. On the other hand, they're 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 wildly entertaining, and some of them are very happy. Um, she's not there. Has this, as, I think has that people, same sense, uh, you know, of uh, entertainment humor. Yeah, I think uh, so. It's, she's not she's not there, which was my first memoir, my first uh-huh. byline as a woman. Oh, it was, was your first byline as a woman. Okay, yeah, okay. Was um, is a book that I think is more honest, and uh-huh, uh, it, it it still has a kind of a a, a, a comic energy to it, but there's. I think I'm a little bit, I've become, a, as a woman, I think my voice, I, I think I'm a little bit better at talking about um, suffering and, 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 and the, some of the tragic aspects of life, too. You, you, if you wanted to write the, the doctoral thesis, you could say that my work as a man was fiction and my work as a woman has been nonfiction. And that it, maybe that reflects a, a change or a metamorphosis from what was false to what is true. And when you say nonfiction, you mean truer to reality? Because I mean, your most recent book, Long Black Veil, is a fiction book. Yeah, that was my first novel uh, mm-hmm. as uh, under as a woman, uh, as a, as my, under my female byline. And that's not a humorous uh, book. No, oh, I think okay. that has much of the, um, and it's a very autobiographical book as well. It's so in, yeah. I think it has some of the energy. So I guess my writing has changed, um, but maybe it's not like you know when I was a boy, I wrote about it, submarines, it, it, yeah. and now <laughs> no, no, yeah. as a woman, you know, I'm writing about salads and yeah. and. Uh, <laughs> close dancing or something. Um, so, Well, the, I mean, again, all stereotypes are just that, but one gets a sense that uh, women have a better so- sense of social interaction, a, 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 a con- a understanding of, uh, or in, they're in tune more with the, the, the social interactions than men. And yeah, people say that. I, 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 I remember noticing in the classroom, it used mm-hmm. to be, that if if I gave the same lecture, mm-hmm. uh, it used to be when I was when I was a boy, people would write that shit down. People would say, "Oh, I this is great." This. And mm-hmm. and as a woman, uh, people would kind of look look at me and smile. Hmm. And I remember th- I remember thinking, but now I'm not an authority figure anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And at the same time, I think people, to a certain extent, I'm I'm better at. Um, uh, shepherding conversations in the classroom. I think people are able to express the things that they're thinking with a little more um, ease in my classroom, which in a way is good, I guess, although it's a cliche. But I mean, part of me is like, well, goddamn, I, 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 wanna, I still want to be an authority figure. Yeah, of course. Write this down, kids. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but if you sent, but, but on the other hand, being a teacher, being able to steer things in the classroom, I mean, there's many, as a teacher, there's many aspects of the classroom besides what the actual learning experience is. It's, 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 the, much, it's theater. And it's also theater. you as yeah. the chief actor, you yeah. keep changing. Because yeah. when you're young, you have the secret pedagogical trick of being part of their yeah. generation. And the older you get, um, the, you know, I don't share the same music or, yeah. or shows or movies yeah. uh, as my students yeah. anymore, yeah. mostly. And it's, it, you know, I have to 
now I have to do it on scholarship alone, which yeah. unfortunately is the <laughs> thing I don't have. <laughs> <laughs> well, what about in, uh, I don't want to push this too far, but what about beyond the classroom in social, social interactions? Do you find your interaction with the, your, the milieu, with friends and, and groups that you find yourself being able to interact in groups differently than you did before? Oh, I mean, the point is, look, it's always going to be different if people are aware, you yeah. know, that you're trans, as opposed to people well, just accepting you as a when woman. When I first transitioned, I was definitely, especially if I was around men who didn't mm. know, um, and even sometimes around men that did, I would often find myself people coming on to me, and that was really a shock because huh. um, it was it was just mm. something I talk about socialization. I'd never been trained how to deal with um, with with men. I remember there was a scene. Um, my band was playing in a bar mm -hmm. and, um, uh, this, I, I swear to God, this happened. A guy came up to me during the, in, during one of the breaks with the band and he said, uh, excuse me, uh, um, uh, was your daddy a thief? And I said, what? No. And he said, well, I don't know, but someone stole the stars and put them in your eyes. <laughs> and I said, well, aren't you nice to say that? Thank you so much. And that's when my girlfriend, Laura, um, grabbed me by the arm and pulled me off. And she said, what is wrong with you? I said, what? She said, thank you very much. What? That's not what you say in that situation. I said, really? What do you say? She said, what you say is, fuck you. <laughs> yeah. Leave me alone. Get out of here. I said, really? Just, he seems so nice. And she was like, I think I said, uh, um, I don't think he meant any harm. <laughs> well, no, And she said, yeah, harm is exactly he, he, what, what he, he meant. had in mind. But no, but that's an interesting <laughs> question. I mean, because I think... Many men would like to be hit on, women, because they don't get it. And women tend to realize they have to deal in a world which they're being hit on a lot more. And uh, uh, I had this argument with, believe it or not, um, Chris uh, Jenner. Of yeah. All people. Yeah. Um, I was because I was on that Caitlyn Jenner show, and there was yes. one time. I think this is actually the the video of this is actually online somewhere, um, and all, everybody in that group, um, including. Um, one or both of the Kardashian, the younger yeah, Kardashian yeah. girls, where they're all sitting around. Um, and somebody said, oh, Jenny Boylan, we need to get you a stylist. And mm -hmm. I'm like, what? And it's like, yeah, you know, you just... And of course, it was a day where I was, I thought, because I was on TV, yeah, yeah, I thought I was looking really good. Yeah, yeah. And they were like, mm, no, not really. <laughs> and I was like, what an insulting thing to say to me that I need a stylist. Yeah, I mean, yeah. you know, I'm... I, 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 yeah. I, and... and uh, then I just kind of said, you know, we're, aren't we here for something more important than what we look like? Uh -huh. And uh, Kris Jenner, to her credit, it turns out, maybe to no one's surprise, very smart woman. She said, yeah, but as a woman, you're always going to be in, um, you know, you're always going to have to kind of fight to, to yeah. get power in a situation. Yeah. And if you... If you're beautiful and if you have the right clothes yeah, and, all, yeah. and all this other stuff, um, then you'll have power in the situation that you wouldn't otherwise have. Uh, and I just kind of pushed back on that again. I said, you know, yeah, but that's power that you buy by yeah. buying clothes yeah, and by yeah, buying all this stuff. And I said, I want, I want people to, um, if I have power in a situation, I want it to be because I'm smart and because mm. um, I... Um, I'm a good writer, and I'm and I've read a lot of books. Yeah, and she just kind of looked at me like, yeah, well, good luck with that. <laughs> well, no, but it would be great. I mean, we should live in. It would be great to live in a world where 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 power, not so much power, but impact, just depending upon what you say or what you did, and not not who you were at some level, gender wise, culture wise, class wise, and well, otherwise. you know, you know where I no noticed the difference. It used to be that if I was going out to dinner by myself, which I don't mm. do that often, mm -hmm. but if I'm in if I'm in the city or if I'm if I'm mm. in a strange city, especially, um, the best place to sit was at the bar with a book. Mm -hmm. And I would love, I, I don't like sitting at a table by myself because mm -hmm. then I feel like an object of pity. Yeah. But if I'm at the bar and I have a, a book, book and a, and a cocktail, um, life is good. Mm -hmm. But when I was younger and prettier, it would also mean, it, I you might were, as well have had a sign on my back that thing, said, bother uh, me. Yeah, bother me. Yeah. Um, and um, now that I'm 60, in fact, hmm, funny, uh, usually I get left alone. Oh. I, I've attained a certain invi invisibility, which I think I also would not have uh, if I were still a boy. I think, you know, a 60-year-old man is a, a man of um, tremendous power in the culture. A six-year-old woman, uh, you know, the, the, if beauty has a social, um, 
uh, power. It, mm. it, you're you're you have less a firm grip on that by the by the time yeah, you get, I guess you get older. Can, yeah. yeah. Um, so, um, but on the other hand, the good news is now I can sit at a bar and drink my cocktail and read a book and everything is fine. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no. I also, I also like to go to bars and read when I was younger. I mean, I still, it, it, I feel more comfortable everywhere if I'm alone and have a book uh, it, for if, some reason. If, to me, if I'm, if I'm in that situation and I'm in a strange city mm. and I've just, I've just checked into the hotel mm. and I don't have to do a thing until the next morning, to me, that is, that is seventh it, heaven. It, it is, yeah, I agree. But, you know, I will say, though, as a man in his 60s, and happily I'm old, and you, by the way, you look great to me. But, oh, thank you, Lawrence. But, but, but uh, uh, it's not so easy to be a man in your 60s either right now. It's an, I know, it, and I don't mean to sound it, it, um, um, uh, uh, unsympathetic. It's, yeah. it's hard getting older. You and I yeah. both have hearing aids. We yeah. both, um, mm -hmm. well, you have glasses and I have uh, bionic um, eyeballs. Yes, but I'm soon going to have a bionic hip. So, yeah, yeah, and you're going to have a bionic <laughs> hip. So, um, it... Um, yeah, it's, it's it's not it, not just the physical aspect, but but social aspect. But the social of, aspect, aspect, yeah, that's, that's the thing. It's no surprise that people turn turn grayer and and become less um, athletic or, yeah. or 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 bendable mm -hmm. the older the older we get. But we forget about the uh, the the change in our, our uh, relationships with other people and, and and society's changes and the ability to know exactly where you know we have formative years and the formative years are thirty years ago and society's very different. Now and it's a, it's a, I think it's a challenge for all of us to figure out how to correctly fit in into that right but, yeah. and so and but for so for transgender women in particular mm. um, there's just been this great emphasis on when on the transition yeah yeah sure. um, which usually happens in young, younger mm -hmm. a younger part of your life and on uh, you know a lot of attention in the media is paid to people who are suddenly fabulously beautiful mm -hmm. and what's not paid attention to is someone who like you know i i've lived a third of my life 20 years in this body yeah and uh what does it mean to be an older transgender person mm -hmm. what does it mean to be someone who mm -hmm. who has the kind of unique medical and healthcare challenges that we have yeah. um that's a that's a conversation that you don't hear about well, let me when I, before i leave this there's one other thing uh, there's been a uh, there's was at least one study that uh, Men interpret women smiling at them as sexual. Mm. Women interpret men smiling at them as friendly. Did that mm. change for you? I don't know, Lawrence. Um, I think I'm a pretty friendly person. Yeah, you uh, and, you, I and can so attest I, to that. And I know that I, I know that I carry with me some vestigial remnants of my uh, socialization um, in the younger part of my life. Um, I. Uh, I I think I think I'm I think I'm I'm generally a pretty friendly person. Yeah, uh, you're and open I, and easy to I talk. I like to mm. engage with people. I like to engage with strangers. But but I'm also feeling as a more vulnerable person now. Yeah, uh, sure. I, I, there are times when I um like for instance we're 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 um, taping this in the New York Times building yeah. here in New York City. Yeah. Just about a month ago, I was down on the street here, yeah. but just about a block away, yeah. heading to a meeting here at the Times. And somebody came up to me on the street and said, excuse me, are you Jenny Boylan? And I said, why, yes, big smile. And mm -hmm. he smiled at me and he said, I, I read your work. And I said, yeah. And he said, you know that column you wrote? And then he brought up a column that I'd written um, several weeks yeah. earlier. And he got angrier and angrier mm -hmm. and angrier until finally he started swearing at me. And he said, you need to retract that. Um, mm -hmm. Wow. Um, you know, he said, you're an idiot for, pub for, for writing that. And that's when I just turned on my heel and kind mm -hmm. of, I didn't run, but I walked away swiftly. Mm -hmm. And if you have been a man, you might not. Have well, been. I was never the kind of person who would have swung a punch anyway, mm -hmm. but, um, but you did I, talk the, about that vulnerability. I remember there's a time after you were performing yeah. and you're in, and she's not there. A very poignant scene. The first time after late at night, after a, Performance, you're walking to your car. Oh yeah, a, a whole guy, different level of vulnerability. Yeah, a guy came up to me and and kind of grabbed my arm and mm -hmm. um, he he'd been watching me from the bar like mm -hmm. a wolf all night long. Yeah, and uh, um, he said to me something like, "We can do this the easy way, or we can do we this the, the hard, hard way." way. Yeah. And I was like, "Wow!" It was just kind of shocking to me and 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 very frightening. Yeah. Um, fortunately, I guess it's fortunate he was drunk enough so that I I actually pushed him. Mm -hmm down yeah. and and got in my car and locked the locked the mm. car and drove away um somebody said to me later well if you'd still if you hadn't been socialized mm. as a boy you wouldn't have pushed him away 
And I don't know if that's true. Somebody said that to me. I think I think most women probably would have. Well, also but. you're you're a tall woman. I mean, you're not a you know you're, you're, six feet of love. <laughs> yes, or five foot twelve, as my mother used to say. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, you know, so that you, you know, physically, I mean, if you'd been much smaller, I don't know if it'd been. Uh, but, yeah, but, yeah, I don't know. Let me ask another thing, because and among the many facets, besides being a writer, we'll get back to writing as I want to talk about writing too. Is and 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 a teacher, you have been a musician. And I mean, I couldn't help think, actually, uh, a song came to mind as you, when, when we were first talking about what you experienced after transition. And of course, the Stones, you can't always get what you want. Sometimes <laughs> you get what you need. And uh, uh, I'll use that for my next book. Okay, good. And you have free permission. Okay, to you. thank you. <laughs> thank you, me Mick. and Mick Jagger. Thank you, Mick. <laughs> but um, did your taste in music change at all? No. 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 Um, uh, I mean, I, I think my reaction to music has changed. My reaction to a lot of things has changed. Um, uh, and I hate to say it because it's such cliched bullshit, but I'm, I'm but, and, and maybe it's just hormonal. Maybe it's the effect of chemicals in mm -hmm. the bloodstream, but tears are very close to the surface. Uh, I can, I'm much more likely to be um, moved uh, by a piece of music oh, um, and um, you, you, to have my breath taken away. Not when you before you transitioned, it wasn't as frequent. Did you ever no. cry? You never cried. Um, very rarely, very rarely. But then, I mean, in those days, I was just keeping everything, everything in, locked down in the hole, yeah. as they say on the wire. Yeah, I just um, um, as as very closed in. Well, you know, I I try. Uh, look, I'm I don't pretend to be a literary critic. I I read a lot, and I like literature. I like it, you know, to read and. And, um, Says the author of a best-selling book. <laughs> well, but okay, but uh, but not yet a novel, although I do I have been working on one. But anyway, um, I see connections at least, and I haven't read all your work, and uh, uh, but um, when I that they all at least what I see, I see remnants of your of your life, or at least uh, you know she's not there. Talks about a key change in your life, and but there's also. Uh, the other the other memoirs are sort of also haunted by the past in a way and so i see this this continuity of of haunting and a and a and a and a, a, a not an epiphany but a key moments in life so, uh, of changing that produce a future that changes things particularly in the in the most recent book mm. of of sort of this continuity of of ghosts yeah. ghosts in your parents house ghosts of your past life and and I'm wondering, uh, you know, I want to talk about that a little bit. Do you well, see? sure. I and mean, I think, um, so when we when we talk about ghosts, mm -hmm. um, it could be we're talking about um, what I think is um, a, something that's make believe that mm -hmm. you know there are um, spirits uh, that are out to scare us. And I mm -hmm. don't. I'm, I've seen things that I can't explain. I know, but, yeah. but I, at the same time, I, I I don't really believe in those kinds of ghosts. Good. And I think it's I think it's because they're not there. Yeah, I think <laughs> it's I think it's silly. I mean, I, I do. There are things that we can't explain, but but uh, I, I, the kind of ghosts that I think are more, um, they're more interesting are uh, the ghosts as metaphor. Yeah, which is to say, so to me, being haunted to me means that something has happened to you that you've never quite gotten over and that continues to affect who you become yeah. into the future. Um, it's like, it's just more like shadows than mm -hmm. ghosts that trail, trail after us. And for some, it, for some people it's trauma. It's mm -hmm. some, some terrible thing happened to them. Um, and I think there are a lot of trans people like that. Well, there's, there's certainly a lot of veterans who are like that, but I think there's, people can also be haunted by joy and you're you're lucky if that's if that's you. Uh, mm. If something really good happens to you, um, with any luck, you carry that with you for the rest of your life as well. Well, but I also see. So I see it's not just haunting, but I see or, or ghosts. I see family secrets, episodes that change lives. Those are two things I think mm -hmm. about. I think about from your knowing your personal life, family secrets, right. interpersonal secrets, yeah. haunting events, episodes that change lives. Yeah. And it's it's interesting for me to see that continuity. Of, do you think you're fascinated by family secrets because you were keeping so many secrets personally? Oh yeah, sure. Uh, and um, it's funny. We th there is a sense that if only we could only 
tell the truth, mm-hmm. then we wouldn't be haunted. Mm-hmm. But I think people get used to being haunted. Yeah. It becomes such a such a, a habit that even after we've 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 told our truth and lived our truth, we still are in the habit of 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 feeling um, um, feeling the past. And and the thing is that people have to build a bridge between who they are and who they were. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, our, you can't just begin your life one one day as yeah. if everything that happened before that n- never existed. When people enter the wit- witness protection program, mm-hmm. I have no idea how they survive because it's kind of it kind of means you don't have a history, and even if your history is something that you're not proud of or that mm-hmm. or that is painful to you. We ha- you have to make peace with it because otherwise you can never really be whole. At least that's what I think. Yeah, that's true. Although, I, though you had to enter womanhood without having gar- girlhood, so in some sense it's a, it's a. I mean, you write about it a little bit. Yeah, but you know, I in a way I'm I feel look so, look mostly. I mean, it, that's that's sad because it means that in some ways I'm a more awkward person than I would be. I would, at this awkward age. is not how I would describe yeah. you, Jenny. But <laughs> I think on the whole, how lucky am I? Yeah. To have had a boyhood. I've yeah. seen things most women don't get to see. Do. And my boyhood was not, I mean, it was strange. Mm-hmm. It was kind of an isolated boyhood. Um, but, you know, I, um, I I had that life and that there were a lot of joys in that life and I'm, I'm grateful for them. Well, I think that's right. I mean, one, we'll may get to some differences we have, opinion we have, but, I, but one of the one of the marvels for me is that the only life we have is the one we're, we're living here. And, and our life is a series of experiences. And, and having ha- had a wide variety of experiences, even ones which are rather traumatic, at the end of our lives, we get to say, we lived through that and experienced that. And how lucky are we, even if it's an experience we never would have, would have asked for, or uh, that we went through it. And- I, what's the film? I can't even remember what the film is, but there's a scene where somebody has gone back in time mm-hmm. and they, and, and, has the opportunity to skip over, or maybe they have the opportunity to go forward in time and skip mm-hmm. over their adolescence and mm-hmm. skip over their their miserable twenties, and someone else is trying to advise them on this and says, "Well, you you could do that, but think about all the heartbreak you're going to miss out on." Yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, and I've you know I've written about time travel. <laughs> what a shame. Physicist. Yeah, and I've often say you know my, people are fascinated by time travel for two reasons: one, to go back and correct the errors of the youth, and two, to relive them. <laughs> <laughs> That's, uh, my son is is a is a um, engineer, and mm-hmm. he was he was drawing this this mysterious drawing with a lot of equations. Mm-hmm. Um, I said, "What are you doing?" He said, "Oh, I'm working on the." issue of time travel. <laughs> and I said, which direction? He said, to the past. I said, as far as I know, the only way you can go um, uh-huh. in, in, in physics is, is into the future. He said, well, that's what I'm working on. So the next morning I came downstairs and here was this drawing, which he'd, he'd completed. Mm-hmm. And there was an arrow showing the present and mm-hmm. there was an arrow that went back and there was a circle and an X on the timeline. And I thought, hmm. And I looked around and he wasn't in the house. <laughs> oh, oh, you thought, oh, thought, oh, wait a minute. <laughs> this is bad. This is bad. I hope, I hope he knows how to get back. Now, turns out he was at his girlfriend's, yeah. but okay. You know. Yeah, we do all travel pretty well into the future. We've mastered that part of time traveling. And, and it's an open question about whether we can do the opposite. And there's many, you know, I've written about it. It's, uh, it's I know you have. Yeah, and it's, it's. Uh, I bet, I'm betting no, but the, you know, there's lots of pair. We can go into that, but I'm not going to because I want to talk more about you. <laughs> <laughs> but one of the things I noticed, and again, I, I maybe if I'd done more homework, I would know. The last book, the, the, the whenever you talk in the first person, um, and I, as I'm writing a novel, it's interesting for me to think about writing the third person versus the first person, but the first person is a female character in this last book. Were there novels of yours where the where where the first when you before you transition where the first person was a male? Uh, I have almost always all of my novels, except for a few chapters in the new one, uh, were third person. Uh, and yeah, there's a um, few chapters in the first in the new one where it's a first person. But I yeah. didn't know if you if you carried that. No, I never. I never. Um, but I don't know if it's about gender. I think it's about uh, the. Uh, Henry James, I believe, said the first person was barbaric. <laughs> that is certainly as an author, you have more, um, you, you may not have as much intimacy yeah. with a third person voice, but on the other hand, uh, you have the ability to make all sorts of godlike choices. Yeah, no, which it's, it's, gives you more control in the thing you're writing. It's fascinating for me because as I've been, you know, playing with writing fiction, uh, 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 I, I, 
the idea of writing in the first person, I just it seems so alien to me. It's so much easier for me to write in the third mm. person because you, you are creating a godlike reality. And but then when you write, when I write memoir, it can only be in the first person. Yeah, of course. But yeah, yeah but that but hopefully there's a difference. The memoir hopefully has some connection to the real world, and, yeah, the, and I the other so. one is a reflection <laughs> of the of the real world, of course. By show don't you know? I think we were talking before about in order to. I mean, whenever we're writing it, uh, some way we're by allegory, whether it's physics or otherwise, we're uh, 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 we're trying to show and not tell. We're trying to get people to think about things, but not saying, "Hey, you need to think about transgender, or you need right. to think about traumatic events, or you need to think about this." It's showing us so people can empathize and begin to think about their own experience. Right. We're using the example of often. It's one thing to lecture someone about um, the, the equality and human rights, and then because that's yeah. the, the telling. But then when you show, that means when someone sees that it's someone they love, it's someone. I mean, sometimes I think the best case for my womanhood is made simply by me living my life. Sure. And um, whenever I run into people who just don't believe that I should have equal yeah. rights, I refute them. Oh, look at me, I'm crying now. Yeah. Uh, I, I refute them. My work here is done. <laughs> <laughs> How do I refute them? I refute them with the fact of my life. Yeah, I of refute course. them by living every day with uh, joy and and fullness um, yeah. and and blarney. Mm-hmm. And and that is, is, is a better argument for my humanity than any, than any lecture. Yeah, I think that's right. You know, I remember, actually, I'm going to cry because I remember a... Uh, for me, the most poignant moment when we, we had an event that I ran, that you and Phyllis Fry, who was the first transgender judge, and I remember looking out at the audience and saying, if you have a problem recognizing, in this case, transgender people or women, just look at the two wonderful women who are on stage with me. I mean, yeah. I couldn't imagine a better way of just saying, look, get over it. They, 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 these are two wonderful women. And hello. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Hello. I, mean, I think what happens is people come up with a, with a theory, a theory of the universe, uh, and a theory um, that um, um, that excludes people yeah, or yeah. excludes um, people can argue themselves away mm-hmm. from the truth. Yeah. Um, and sometimes I think if, if you have a theory about the world, especially mm-hmm. that involves human beings, yeah. uh, that doesn't make life easier, mm-hmm. that doesn't reduce the suffering of people who are really in at risk. Well, maybe what you need is a better theory. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, speaking of, oh, that's a great segue because something else I want to talk about. Because I think if we're going to talk about, you know, gender and sex, we have to hit politics and religion. <laughs> All the things okay. we're not supposed to talk you're about. You're in, you're out with Jenny, <laughs> Jenny Boylan. Yeah, no, so, no, no. So I think that let's talk about the, we've been dealing with personal things, which has been fascinating. Uh, and, but there is the politics of transgender. We're living in, diff, in, in you know, it, it often amazes me. We're almost the same age. I'm older than you, but as a child of the 60s, I never thought we'd be here in some ways, good ways, but mostly bad ways. I thought we'd have gotten over so many things we haven't. And we're living these times when, again, after marriage equality, it seemed to me that transgender was just around the corner of, of acceptance mm. and openness. And now we're in these times where, where at least from above, maybe not from below, but there's these incredible retre- retrenching and things are worse. Yeah. Why don't we talk about that a little bit? And I know you write about it in your <laughs> columns, but... Describe the current situation and what well, your concerns we're a, are. We're in a situation where all of the progress that we made over the last 10 years or so uh, is attempting to be rolled back um, by this administration. And it is... Um, What's interesting is that they, they've got a number of issues that they're that they're 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 pushing through or trying to uh, legislate or trying to just accomplish by um, executive order. And my theory is this, that it's not... It, it's not that they want; they really care about transgender people in bathrooms because mm. they've actually been in bathrooms mm. with transgender yeah, people, people. whether they know for, it or not, <laughs> for decades and decades yeah, without yeah. knowing it, both yeah. in the men's room and in the women's room. Mm. Um, it's not about transgender service in the military because transgender people have been serving, mm-hmm. um, and include and the the former um, uh, deputy secretary of defense, Amanda Simpson. Mm-hmm. Um, is a transgender woman. Yeah. Um, uh, it's not about. Uh, it's not about any of this stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, it's not about. It, it, what they're trying to do is to simply say there shouldn't be transgender people. 
Yeah. We it's, it's just it, it there we should just um this whole thing um makes us it, it is a, is the the kind of society we don't want to live in. We don't want to live in a society in which um something that seems as um certain to us mm-hmm. as as maleness and femaleness is is uh, less dependable. It destabilizes the world. So they're trying, essentially, as Randy Newman once sang, they're mm. trying to wash us away. Yeah. And um, and yet, we're still going to be here because guess what? We've always been here. Well, well, I'm wondering if it's more than that, though. It's not this in one world with transgender people. I wonder if there are, maybe I should change it. I was going to say straw men, but straw women. Um, the, the, the point is, it seems to me, I see similarities between between the the reactions that are happening about transgender and immigration, in the sense that that I, I can't, I always should, I can't remember with Goering or, or, or Gödel, Goebbels who said that that to make people do what you want, it doesn't matter whether you have democracy or dictatorship, just make them afraid. That there are conv- that mm. transgender people are convenient label of people you should be afraid of because your children might be, and immigrants you must be afraid of because they might take over your jobs, and it allows you to more effectively control people. Right, because what do I actually want from people? Mm-hmm. Turns out, nothing. Yeah. I want to be left alone. Mm-hmm. I want to teach my classes. Uh, I want to... Uh, ride my bicycle. <laughs> I want to. I want to bake some bread. I want to play the piano. I mean, m- my my existence doesn't come at the price of anyone else's yeah. anything. And somehow they they they're met, they're trying to twist it around so that my going about my business will come at the price of. Um, and I don't know what the price is. I guess it's at the very least it's someone's view of the world that um, uh, that that people are being deprived of a world in which in, in which in which I ought not be allowed to exist, or that it, it'll change. I mean, again, it'll change your children. I mean, the big thing about gay for a long time was, oh my goodness, if you have gay teachers or gay foster parents, they're going to make the kids gay. Yeah, there must be some of that where people say. We have transgender people. They're going to want to make your kids. Right, they're going to convince right. your kids that boys they shouldn't be boys. Yeah, right. Um, in fact, there's a whole conservative movement now that's mm-hmm. that is now up in arms about transgender, um, trans men mm-hmm. coming out in um, high school and in college. Um, that were that it's that it's a that it's a fad. There's a woman. Yeah. There's a woman from the um, who published a piece in the Wall Street Journal about the epidemic. Yeah. Um, and. Um, yeah. It's as if somehow people are entering into the most <laughs> profound um, decision of their lives in the same way that they decide, you know, to, I don't know, uh, you know, go to a Miley Cyrus concert. Yeah, or yeah or, you know, wouldn't it be so much fun to enter into something that's going to put me in an, a difficult position for the rest of my life? Hey, that's something I want to do easier. Yeah, and result in, in sterilization mm. and and um, and marginalization. The same way they see it about gay people. Yeah. It's a fad. Oh, it's a, it's a fad. You know? They've even admitted, um, there is a document came out that shows that, in fact, they, they knew all along that um, transgender people pose no threat in, in, in public restrooms, mm-hmm. but they could use it as a bludgeon. A bludgeon, In exactly. fact, more... More Republican congressmen have been arrested uh, for solicitation in uh, public restrooms than transgender people. That's a fact. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There you go. And and but again, I think it's using as I say. I'm going to start saying straw women for now. But but um, well, you could because yeah, but you you should say straw men, true. straw yeah, persons, straw persons. Because there's straw again, persons, yeah. people forget that there really are an equal number of there trans men and trans women. In fact, you know, in, in fact. Uh, yeah. Actually, my friend Penn Gillette has been saying that he he just tries never to use gender at all now. Just talk to because people are people in some ways. There yeah, I mean, I get that, but I, I'm not. There are transgender people who who are who um, are, are uh, advocating the end of gender. Yeah, yeah. Well, and, and I'm I think I'm not I'm, one of them because actually, for me, being being female is really fun. Yeah, sure. And, um, and, and I you know I don't use the pronoun. Well, thing. and I, I you know I and I think of myself as a woman without an asterisk and without explanation. Sure. So I think gender is great. I know people feel differently. That's well, okay I think too. it's very it's funny how politically incorrect to say, and that's why I said it to pretend that there aren't differences between men and women that are biological. There are, and that's nothing to be, that's not a pejorative. That's a thing in some ways we're celebrating. I mean, as the rest of, of the diversity of life is worth celebrating in, in many different ways. And 
But okay, look, let's, oh, well, I should, look, there's one thing I, I, I want to bring up maybe when I talk about this context of, and I will because you brought it up. One of your kids is, 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 is trans. transition, is trans. Yeah. Of course, people can say, is it, is it, you know, environment or, you know, is it, is it uh, uh, heredity or environment? Yeah. You know? Have you thought about it? Um, I have thought about it. I'll, I'll keep my, my comments yeah, brief because I can... want my child to be able to tell yeah. their own story. Yeah. Um, uh, I, sus- I suspect that it's about as good an argument for this being uh, genetic as any as anything yeah. else. Um, uh, it was it took me by surprise mm-hmm. and um, made me rethink a lot of things. Um, it's not a story in which I particularly come out very well, to tell you the truth, mm-hmm. and that's maybe that's why it's worth telling uh-huh. that if I, little Miss Transgender Poster you, you, Child, you, yeah. failed to be the perfect parent when my own child came out at least at first yeah um i think that's worth looking at and maybe it just means that i'm a, a less perfect person than i well, hope look to be, i mean I don't, I, I don't want to believe it i can see if I, I like i can't put myself in your position but if i try which i think we should all be doing try to walk in each other's shoes that i would see my i would so sure one of the things i would be concerned about is gee i hope that this is coming from them and not from me and exactly yeah, well yeah. and that's i struggle with that because the, here i mean i'll, I'll just and this, by yeah. the, with this, that that my life has been hard. Yeah, it's been um, uniquely hard, and there's been a lot of kind of. In spite of the fact that I'm, I uh, I think I'm a lucky and a buoyant person, but for all that, there have been a lot of tears sure. and a lot of um, struggle. And you know, you don't want your child's life to be, be hard. Yeah, you want. And to. at the very least, you don't want your child's life to be hard the way yours was, yeah. and not because of you. Yeah. So I had to struggle with all of that first. But mm-hmm. it turns out my child is not living my life again. My mm-hmm. child is living her life, and she's engaged to be married. She's been accepted to graduate school. She has um, a, a scholarship to to graduate school, and she's a delightful, funny. Um, joyful person so she's gonna be just that's fine fun. thanks now you sound like a proud mama i am a proud <laughs> yeah, mama. of course that's great that's great and, and by I'm, the way the thing I I, but i'm not a, but i'm not proud of myself because uh, i think yeah, sure. well, i i wish i'd been um i think i uh i wish i'd seen more deeper into my child's life well, when okay. when she was growing up well i think we as any i've been a parent and i think that we all as any parent would think that i mean it's just a lot easier to screw up as a parent than it is to be to be good and so it's easy to look back at the times one could have been better yeah because there's so many opportunities for that but anyway by the way i think your life when i look at it too it looks to me quite fun and exciting but <laughs> <laughs> but i mean maybe Sometimes, from the outside on a good day. yeah on the today. outside it always looks better but i suppose Look, the last thing I want to talk about, of course, is religion. We talk sex, politics, now religion, because I know <laughs> we have sl- at least slightly different views about that. We've talked about that before. I'll You've- bet the, the same words have come out of each of our mouths at various times. And I, I think the, the because the kind of atheist that you are uh-huh. is not an atheist who believes in nothing. Uh-huh. And the kind of Christian that I am is not the kind of Christian who believes in something. (laughs) Well, as I've I've written, nothing, you know, something comes from nothing very easy. So there's not a big (laughs) difference between the two. But I think, uh, I mean, I think for you, I think you were at least, and I'm going to put words in your mouth and it may not be true, so you can jump out, but many people call themselves Christians because they want to think of themselves as good people. And they think of that as, that I, I think it's clear that many, most people don't, who are not the extremists, pick and choose out of their whatever chosen religion or yeah. family religion, yeah. those things they like and toss the things they don't like and they call their, that, that their religion yeah. because for some reason it makes them feel good about themselves and it makes them feel like they might be good people. And there's been studies shown that many, mo- at least in England, most of the people who check the box Christian don't believe in transubstantiation, virgin birth, this or that. They, be- they like to think of themselves as good people. Is mm-hmm. that why you think of yourself as a Christian? Here's what I believe. I... I think that we should all love each other. Uh-huh. I think that we should um, feed the hungry. <laughs> we should. We're, we're we should, not laughing. We should. <laughs> we should give. We should try to make sure that people can can live mm-hmm. um, their lives full measure uh-huh. on the, uh, on this on this earth. Um, we should forgive each other. We should have compassion for each mm-hmm. other. Um, it, Maybe that's not Christianity. It is. And if you don't want to call it Christianity, I'm perfectly fine with that yeah. because there are things when I th- most of the Christians that I know that mm-hmm. I think of 
um, are people I don't agree with on anything, and I think a lot of them have done terrible, stupid mm. things and believe in, believe in things that are not true. So I, I call myself a Christian because I found a home in the Riverside Church, but the mm. Riverside Church here in New York is is um, based on social justice. Yeah. And uh, y- y- I don't I don't want to lose a lot of sleep and a lot of and a lot of y- y- on a lot of la- bullshit. Uh, oh, yeah, um, or labeling and yeah. so. Yeah. Um, but let me let me just say it's interesting because I mean I and, you know there've been studies shown that on the list of people, including transgender. Uh, that that you know you'd rather be president. Atheist is down there at the bottom with rapists, and and and, and it's fascinating to me to see that. When, Although be, I saw that another poll that said for the first time, uh, no religion has has, it, it, has it, edged it, out Christian. It, uh, fun, yeah, evangelical. Christian, it's, yeah, yeah, it's, it's like forty point one. I view this as great progress. Some other people don't, but I think the point I want to make is that that the real problem that I view as uh, is that is that um, religion is usurp. Uh, morality in the sense that what everything that you said uh, I think uh, does not define a Christian it just finds a caring concerned rational human being and and that to label to label people who don't believe in something or don't accept it as as viable as immoral is just as bad as labeling people who choose who don't choose but who are who are transgender as immoral because having nothing to do with their beliefs, their actions, the way they be, they, they, they treat others around them, we need to start treating people based on the quality of their ideas and the quality of their actions and not on the package or the label uh, or the gender. Um, I'm in full agreement. And I think that's a great way to end in full agreement. Thank you. It's always such a joy to talk what to you. What a gas to be with you, Lawrence. Thanks yeah. for having me here. It's great. Thank See you, you later. Great. The Origins Podcast is produced by Lawrence Krauss, Nancy Dahl, Amelia Huggins, John and Don Edwards, and Rob Zepps. Directed and edited by Gus and Luke Holwerda. Audio by Thomas Amison. Web design by redmondmedialab.com. Animation by Tomahawk Visual Effects. And music by Rickolis. To see the full video of this podcast, as well as other bonus content, visit us at patreon.com slash originspodcast. <laughs>